The history of Piedmont has been about the land. From the days of the Rancho San Antonio to Walter Blair's dairy farm, the discovery of Sulphur Springs in Piedmont Springs Park, and the early days of real estate development, land in Piedmont has played an important part. From the 1870s on, visitors to the Piedmont Hills discovered that Piedmont was warmer and less foggy than San Francisco, and the hills offered breathtaking views of San Francisco Bay. Many who came to picnic in the Piedmont Hills, or take the waters, at Piedmont Springs Park, discovered its beauty, bought land, and stayed. Real estate developers played a prominent part in Piedmont's early years, buying up large tracts of land and setting out lots for sale. Piedmont Park Tract offered the first lots for sale in the 1870s. Lots were large, and the first Piedmont residences were country estates, up to 20 acres. Piedmont pioneers Blair, Requa, Craig, Wetmore, and Gamble were among the first to build in Piedmont. Their estates were self-sufficient with their own water supply, barns for livestock, and pens for poultry. In the 1890s, cable cars brought more residents to Piedmont. They built Queen Anne-style houses on city-sized lots rather than the acres of yore. Today, the Queen Anne houses that survived from the 1890s give us a hint of old Piedmont. Sadly, the large country estates of the 1870s are gone. As the 20th century dawned, these large estates gave way to the Piedmont that we know today. The first decades after 1900 experienced tremendous growth. City Hall and the houses and buildings that we recognize were built. The Piedmont of today was emerging. The Beginning Walter Blair, who lived from 1830 to 1887, was the pioneer settler and developer in Piedmont. By the time Blair and his brother rode across San Francisco Bay in 1852 and discovered the golden rolling hills of Piedmont, the U.S. government owned this part of Vicente Peralta's land. Blair purchased 600 acres, most of Piedmont, at $1.25 per acre. His land extended from Scenic Avenue west to Grand Avenue. The brothers selected a level site just south of Moraga Avenue near a freshwater spring and built a modest one-room cabin. They named the pathway from Moraga to their home Vernal for the abundant ferns and shrubs that grew around the nearby spring. Vernal Avenue was renamed Highland Avenue in 1911. Blair planted grain, raised cattle, and established a dairy at the present corner of Blair and El Cerrito Avenues. His dairy pastures of wheat and barley flowed down from El Cerrito Avenue to Grand Avenue. Long after Blair and his dairy were gone, old timers still called this land Blair's Pasture. 300 cattle grazed on his ranch. In the 1870s and 1880s, Blair's Dairy supplied milk and butter to surrounding communities in San Francisco. Walter Blair also played a major role in the development of Oakland and Piedmont streets. Always the entrepreneur, he established Blair's Quarry at the corner of Blair and Dracaena Avenues. Blair hired Chinese labor to quarry rock from a basalt outcropping near his dairy and sold crush rock to lay over the muddy, dusty streets in Oakland. You can still see the quarry walls in Dracaena Quarry Park. Blair also developed his own horse car line that continued from Piedmont Avenue up Moraga Road and down Vernal Avenue to the Piedmont Springs Hotel. At Moraga and Vernal, he established Blair Park in 1884 as a bucolic park for picnickers and another reason to ride his horse car line. Dairyman, quarryman, entrepreneur, Walter Blair was Piedmont's first pioneer. The Piedmont Land Company was the first driving force behind the development of the Piedmont Hills. In the 1860s, these mineral springs, said to contain sulfur, magnesia, iodine, and iron, were rediscovered in the ravine behind today's Exedra. Drinking or soaking in mineral water was believed to have great curative powers. These mineral springs were similar to the popular mineral waters in Calistoga, and they were only three miles from downtown Oakland. The discovery of sulfur springs so close to Oakland and San Francisco promised to be a bonanza. 
In 1868, investors formed the Piedmont Land Company, bought 800 acres of land surrounding the springs, and built the Piedmont Springs Hotel to accommodate guests to the Sulphur Springs. As a director of the company, James Gamble is credited with naming this new developing area and the company Piedmont, meaning foot of the mountain. All the directors, except one, would be some of the first residents in Piedmont. Piedmont Springs Hotel. In the 1870s and 1880s, the land company's Piedmont Springs Hotel drew many visitors into the Piedmont Hills. The Piedmont Springs Hotel opened in 1871, built where the Exedra stands today. Blair's horse car line provided transportation from Piedmont Avenue to the hotel. The Piedmont Springs Hotel promptly became a popular destination as a resort. It was an elegant two-story Victorian building with a wide veranda, 20 first-class bedrooms and two suites, five dining rooms, telegraph service, and a grand saloon. Visitors flocked to the hotel to take the waters. It was considered one of the finest resorts of its day in California and compared favorably with the resorts in Calistoga to the north. Aristocratic San Francisco families would spend a week here. Mark Twain was one famous visitor to the Piedmont Springs. His only visit to Piedmont was recorded in a photograph taken by Edward Maybridge in front of the gazebo-covered springs. This photo graces the cover of the 1982 edition of Evelyn Craig Patiani's History of Piedmont, Queen of the Hills. Early Residents in the 1870s in the 1870s, several wealthy families chose to live in the Piedmont Hills rather than on San Francisco's fashionable Knob Hill. Most bought their property from the Piedmont Land Company and lived near Piedmont Springs Park. Blair already had his ranch house on Vernal. Directors Booth and Gamble of the Piedmont Land Company chose prime sites and were some of the first Piedmont residents with large estates. Lucius A. Booth made his fortune in mining in Nevada and was associated with the Big Four of railroad fame. As a director in the Piedmont Land Company, he was one of the first to build in Piedmont, building a weekend cabin adjacent to Piedmont Park. Inviting friends to visit, he introduced his friend and former Nevada mining engineer Isaac Requa and his wife Sarah to the beauty of the Piedmont Hills. Isaac Requa. Requa's fortune came from silver in the Comstock. He and Sarah fell in love with the Piedmont Hills, the land, the view, and the climate. They chose a prominent knoll overlooking San Francisco Bay and bought 17 acres. Requa built his Italianate mansion in 1876 at the corner of today's Requa Road and Requa Place. His mansion was by far the most impressive of these early estates. Designed by Henry W. Cleveland, the house took two years to build. It was painted yellow with a prominent four-story tower that was visible from the ferries as they crossed the bay. Requa called his estate the Highlands, and today Highland Avenue and the Piedmont School Highlanders derive their name from this early estate. The Bowmans and the Wrights Arthur Bowman was the secretary and treasurer of the Piedmont Land Company. Rather than build, Bowman and his family rented Walter Blair's vacated home on Vernal Avenue with their children, cook, nurses, coachman, and gardener. Mrs. Bowman's sister and her family, the Henry Wrights, built a large home on 13 acres above Highland Avenue, where Langdon Court is today. The two families hired Joseph Worcester to tutor their children, and in 1877, Worcester built his own rustic cottage a quarter mile up the hill. Worcester's cottage was unique in an age of elaborate Victorian houses. Worcester built his cottage with wood left in its natural state. The exterior was redwood shingle and the interior was paneled in redwood. Architectural historians credit Worcester's cottage with starting the Bay Tradition architectural style. When Bernard Maybeck lived briefly in Piedmont, he came upon the Worcester's cottage while hiking in the hills and is said to have been inspired by its design. Maybeck would become a leading architect in the Bay Tradition architectural style. Jesse Wetmore. 
Jesse Wetmore had interests in real estate and was also one of the first to purchase property from the Piedmont Land Company. Jesse and his brother William built his Victorian home in 1878 as a summer home with a wide veranda on three sides to catch the breezes. It soon became a permanent home for Jesse and Matilda and their adult children. Today, the house and the carriage house still sit on the property. At the turn of the century, their stable and gardens to the east fill the entire block where City Hall sits today. Hugh Craig. Piedmont Land Company President Henry Bigelow brought his fellow San Francisco insurance man, Hugh Craig, to Piedmont for a visit, and that was it. Hugh Craig also succumbed to the beauty of Piedmont's hillsides and bought six acres of land from the Piedmont Land Company. He built his Italianate home on Vernal Avenue in 1879. The Craig property extended along Vernal Avenue from Blair Avenue almost to the park. His estate included a stable and barns for horses and cows, a windmill and a water tower, fruit orchards, and pens for chickens, pigs, and turkeys. James Gamble. James Gamble was another prominent gentleman who chose to live in Piedmont in the 1870s. Gamble was superintendent of the Western Union Telegraph Company and a director of the Piedmont Land Company that developed Piedmont Park and the Piedmont Springs Hotel. He ensured that the telegraph line was extended to the hotel. As noted before, Gamble is credited with naming this new developing area Piedmont. Gamble bought the entire block bounded by Hillside, Magnolia, Bonita, and Vista Avenues. The Gambles raised four children in their large Italianate stick house. A water tower and barn for his horses, cows, and pigs stood at the corner of Vista and Bonita. The house burned in 1912 and was replaced in 1914 by Ralph W. Kinney's home, which serves as Piedmont's recreation center today. Only the three palm trees from Gamble's Victorian Gardens survive. Cable Cars in Piedmont A cable car ride to the country was the perfect way to spend a Sunday afternoon in the 1890s. From 1890 to 1893, cable cars provided convenient transportation for residents in the Piedmont Hills to downtown Oakland and San Francisco, and almost more importantly, they brought visitors and future residents into the hills. August 1, 1890 was opening day for the cable car to Piedmont. The cable company reported that 8,000 passengers rode their cable cars that day. While some cars were open, new green cable cars were designed with large windows and roofs, six to eight inches higher than those of other cars, so as to give passengers a better view of the scenery en route. Dressed in their Sunday best, passengers enjoyed the picturesque ride up the hill to Piedmont. From the powerhouse, cable cars traveled at a swift eight miles per hour up Oakland Avenue through grassy fields and down, up more hills and across the wood trestle over the Linda Avenue ravine. As the cars ascended the final hill, passengers enjoyed views of downtown Oakland, Lake Merritt, and then the Bay and Golden Gate. Many rode the cable cars for the view alone. While the cable car company did not prosper, it was a boon to early Piedmont real estate. Cable cars brought efficient public transportation to Piedmont. Many weekend visitors enjoyed the views and climate and decided to build their homes here. A good number of Piedmont's early 20th century houses were built near the cable car line on Oakland Avenue. It's not surprising that the early horse cars, cable cars, and electric streetcars were built by the real estate investors.